Here's the old casting and the new casting. You can see it's exactly the same. There's some marks here inside. It says CX, GBD, CBD. Uh, this one says the same. Although it might be from a different um, cavity on the on the mold, but essentially they look exactly the same. The holes are in the same place. The features are on the same place. Show you this side. There you go. So it's a it's a perfect match. First thing is I'm gonna install the O-ring. This is some oil that I saved, hydraulic oil that I saved when I disassembled it. Just gonna put some oil on the o-ring just lubricate it and then it should just go and snap in like so next item are the washers so in these cavities there are copper washers so these are the original copper washers and you can see that from the tightening torque they are dished I'm not sure but they might have been oversized for this for this counter bore and you can see that they are completely dished the um, the edges are curled up so I'm gonna toss these and I went ahead and bought some new washers so these are from Menards 3.8 copper flat washer and um, this is for 3.8, so that would be 954 in millimeters, and these are M10 bolts. The outside diameter for the M10 bolt is 9.8-ish in millimeters. So this will go on, the washer is going to go on the bolt. I already tested it, but you can see it doesn't go inside the cavity. It's too large, so I'm going to go and just trim it off camera. And just like that, washers are completed. They fit in nicely okay got four of them brand new still warm from the mill the next thing is to apply the gasket material in this cavity here in this slot I'm gonna use ultra black gasket maker it says oil resistant they use this on um, transmissions and gearboxes so I'm hoping it's gonna work here too When you finish with the gasket, always push out a little bit at the end, make a blob out of it. That will help not to dry it in. So something like that. Next time you're gonna use it, in two years, it will be dried in. Just buy a new one, $3. Next thing is to install the cover. I already wiped this area off with uh, alcohol and I cleaned it inside and outside, made sure there is no debris in it. So the cover goes in like so. All these long bolts are kind of spread out and they are different lengths. wedged in two tools here so that it spreads out this and that hopefully that will make it easier to install next is install the washers on brand spanking new copper washer goes on to each of these and now we can install the nuts
I'm gonna tighten these up in a checkerboard sequence. Some people call it crisscross pattern. Here's a tip. These are 16 millimeters across the flats, so everything is metric. Typically for M10, standard M10 coarse threads, one and a half millimeter pitch, you would have a 17 millimeter flat. But I think what happened here is if they make it 17 millimeters, then these um, countersinks would be too large so it wouldn't fit. So they went with 16 millimeters. Some of you might not have a 16 millimeter if you are fixing something like this, but you can use a phi weight. Okay, so I happen to have a 16 millimeter, but you can use a 5 weight, which is close to 16 millimeter, and it will fit. So here's a 5 weight. Most of the people know this is a spark plug socket. Okay, 5 8 millimeters. This one is with a 3 8 square connector and you can see the 5 8 fits nicely and also the 16 millimeter fits nicely. Decided to go with 40 newton meters. I'm chicken. Yeah, I know. I just don't want to break it. Again, I'm gonna use a crisscross pattern. Just tighten it in a sequence. There are two bolts, one on each side, that's the next. Okay, we got a couple more things here. So this is the valve assembly. So this is the valve that moves inside the plunger. It's actually sitting like this. So this valve assembly goes from this side. It's got O-rings on it all over. So first this goes in there and you need to lead in the o-ring so it's a little tight there's a screw that goes in down here I think it just shuts off one of the galleries there's a tiny little set screw that goes in from this side and it retains that valve body. There's a bolt here that goes in from this side and this will basically press on this valve body. This uses a 21 millimeter wrench. I'm using 1316 and it works. It's close enough. So once I tighten up this bolt, that will push the valve body back and it will go against this screw. So you need to make sure that you adjust that screw, this little one, properly. The next thing is this spring. Goes in like that. I assembled the motor and um, started filling it up with oil so this is the position that they recommend when you fill it up with oil 
So up here is the drain plug which also doubles as a dipstick. And the owner who sold it to me gave me this oil. It's an AW32 hydraulic oil. I like this note here. Mixes safely with original fluids. <laughs> oh, it just makes me chuckle. That's like when they sell you something and it says flushable. So you can flush anything on the toilet. So everything is flushable. Basically that fits through that four inch pipe. But this is pretty cool. Mixes safely with original fluids. The original instruction manual specifies four different types of oils. Shell, Telus 22, Mobile DT11, RL Vitam GF22 and BP Energol. HLP HM22. If you look at the numbers, you can notice that there's 22, 22, 22. So, so these these numbers basically refer to the viscosity at room temperature or close to room temperature. And the DT is different. It, it's got 11. But I did some homework, and uh, this is what I found. So I compared the oils that they are recommending. So there's the Shell Telus, the Mobile Aural and the BP. And you can see right here, this is the uh, viscosity. So we got minus 20 C, uh, 40 C and 100 C. And you can see that 40 C, the viscosity is 22, 15, 22 and 22. That's any Stokes. And what I did I went ahead and I bought this one. This is what my local big box store had. This is Mag 1 AWI SO32. And if you look carefully, I'm showing the data here. So you can see that at that same temperature at 40 degrees C, uh, it has 32 centistokes of viscosity. As far as I'm concerned, what the viscosity says basically. Uh, how thick the oil is and how hard the pump is working when it's uh, moving that oil through orifices and different types of constrictions in a system. And you can see that at 40 degrees it's 22, 22, 22 and that one is 32. So it's not much off. It will be one and a half times harder because it's kind of linear um, to push for the pump. Also you can see I looked up the density, it's pretty much the same. It's, it's, it's oil basically, so it's around 830-850 kilograms per liter. Again the machine was basically brand new when I got it. It, it had basically, basically I cribbed that and I poured in the, uh, two cups of oil that came out. And then this oil, the owner who sold it to me gave this to me. This is a gallon container. It still has about one third. So I'm just gonna go and pour this in. This is also 32 weight or 32 semi stokes, sorry. So we're gonna go and inspect the oil level. Just drive this in and then pull it out see how high the oil level is so you can see that it's between the upper and the lower mark right in the middle I'm not sure how much the camera will show that but here's the upper mark here's the lower mark and the oil is shining on this lower section this upper section is dry this lower section is oily so we got the right oil level. I'm gonna put back this gasket, put this back, tighten it up, and then go for a test. When you thought we are done, she's back in the shrine, and parts are in the altar. It didn't work. I was trying to operate it and the ram wasn't going back and forth so I took the valve body out again and I just said I'm gonna stare at it 
for 10 minutes and that's what I did so I took some pictures before I took it apart make sure that this valve body is positioned properly you know it can go in this way or this way uh, it's really not a poker yoke or it's not really foolproof so I took some pictures and I verified that it was put together properly and I kept poking at it now you might remember that there was a bolt here on the side and you can see the bolt right here is installed and I just said well this is just to prevent something something but I kept thinking about the pump how are they setting up uh, the blow by pressure for the pump there's supposed to be some kind of valve inside and I thought it's down here in a valve body well it turns out I was mistaken uh, these are my favorite uh, moments when I think I know everything and then it just blows right into my face so if you look right here in this area this is the old cover that's a new cover you can see we are looking at this bolt hole here so in this area right there in this bolt hole there's a bolt inside I'll try to show it to you Not sure if it comes through but there's a bolt there's a hex bolt inside and if we are looking from this side which I never did you can see there's a spring inside maybe if I take it to the altar put some lights okay so down in that hole there is a bolt and what that bolt does it's probably preloading a spring that is pressing right here that is pressing on a on a ball so there's a there's a check valve here that's what it is so if you look at the galleries you can see this gallery is open and this is down normal direction down so oil is pooling in this area so that oil is supplying down into the pump the pump basically pressurizes it or gets it into moving and that oil comes back through this gallery and goes up into this channel and then the valve is basically actuating it and defining if the oil is coming through this hole and then pressing against the piston now this check valve is adjusting the maximum pressure so basically if the pressure is too high then this check valve is gonna pop open and then some of that oil will bleed through back into the system so that's what's happening that's why it's not running well it's purely my mistake I didn't look carefully enough to see that so no the problem is I'll tell you what the problem is if you look into the manual the manual says that the pressure is set by the factory and you're not supposed to be tinkering with it it says it somewhere here there's a plumbing diagram here there's a wiring diagram so it's a pretty nice uh, manual that I read through it it says somewhere Screw lock splitter tip to clean the make sure clean periodically check release both controls do not split logs type lockout for your safety to secure okay here you go Max pressure was preset at the factory by a qualified mechanic using professional tools. Unauthorized resetting will prevent the hydraulic pump from providing enough splitting pressure or resulting in serious injury as well as damage to the machine. So that means basically that when they sell me, when they send me a new cover for me to replace, that I should be able to adjust this pressure on my own and basically set it to the proper um, setting so here's what I'm gonna do 
I'm gonna take this wrench and I'm gonna count how many turns the screw is coming out okay and I'm gonna put in the screw and a ball to the new one and use the same amount of turns so here it goes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen okay so at thirteen the bolt head is already protruding out fourteen fifteen sixteen okay at sixteen it came off so sixteen turns and then if I knock on this properly you can see the spring came out and it's a pretty sturdy spring and there's the bolt okay so we're gonna go and install this into the new unit off comes the cap just gonna set it aside and uh, now the problem is you can see there's a large hole here so if I'm putting the if I'm putting the the ball in for the check valve I'm running a chance of the ball coming out through this cavity and falling into the oil so I need to make sure that that doesn't happen so I need to turn the unit so that this is facing down so it's basically completely upside down here I show it again so I'm putting in the ball from this side and I'm plugging this hole with my finger so I'm putting in the ball you see it just went right down there and it came through here so if I'm putting in the ball this way I'm running a chance of the ball falling into the oil that's the last thing I want to do because then I have to take apart this whole thing so to play it safe you see that's the orientation to play it safe I'm gonna turn it upside down and install it that way so I turn it upside down that was a lot of effort I gotta tell you this thing is heavy here you can see the original packaging is still on it so I think this indeed was a crib that also on this foot you can see there's the original plastic packaging so the guy who sold it to me was not lying you can see all the packaging material everywhere so we are putting this together this way because you can see there is an opening here right there there is an opening okay so if it's this way upside down then we are running a chance of the ball disappearing into this hole down here and then it can fall into the oil can or it can fall right into the gear motor which would not be good and it's a blind assembly so the blind assembly means that I don't know if the ball went in properly or not so once I put it together I have no means of verifying it that's what I mean by blind assembly in goes the ball and then the spring you can see the spring is kind of symmetric it's the same on both sides it's ground and then here is the adjustment screw so I'm gonna just put in so it's catching and now I'm gonna go and tighten it 16 turns in a pressure set 16 turns in a pressure set 16 turns in a pressure set early in the morning back again I had to do one more test it's just so funny how many times he slapped me in the face so here's what happened when this was upside down just as I shown you I was putting the ball in and the ball went into this gallery and just dropped down into this gallery and <laughs> it was sitting right there in the hole oh. So it was sitting right there in this hole, thanks God, and not in the oil uh, vessel 
or oil container. So I, I basically ended up placing back the ball this way and uh, it's, it's hopefully seated now. It's running. Oil is not leaking. Time for a test. So I think what happened is the owner wanted to fill it up with oil and he wanted to tip it over and you can see when when you are tipping it over this way then the wheel has a tendency to move when you're lifting up the left side so here I'm trying to tip it over and you can see the wheel is moving towards me and when you're tipping it over then the wheel can jump and unless you hold it like that it can jump and this whole thing can fall down okay so when it has fallen down when it's fallen down you can see that this bolt that holds the activating lever that is the lowest place right now it's resting on a cover but this is thin sheet metal so it can bend up so if you are trying to set it in this position you gotta make sure that the wheel doesn't slip on you because if it will slip on you this whole thing can fall down and if there is concrete underneath this bolt is gonna hit the concrete first and that can definitely cause a failure that that bolt already has a lot of load on it just from the bolt pretension and it will cause that casting to fail let's do a test shall we 10 inch log on the splitter works like a charm just like that this is seasoned this is seasoned firewood you can already see the cracks appearing in it so it it's really easy to split it This is some uh, fresh sycamore. Looks like it's been up there and rotting. No problem. And you can see one part is still nice and the other part is rotted. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.